Coming up tonight on the News at 6. But we don't have enough people physically available to meet the needs of the students. Helena Public Schools weighs its option as COVID-19 cases increase in the community. Plus, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grabenitz breaks down the blizzard that battered parts of Montana over the weekend. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the News at 6. I'm Andy Curtis. And I'm Marian Davidson. Thanks for joining us. Well, turning to state COVID-19 numbers, Montana reported 427 new cases of COVID-19 today, bringing the state total to more than 40,000 cases. Nearly 14,000 of those are active cases. Six deaths have been reported since yesterday, meaning 480 Montanans have died due to COVID-19 complications. Now, one thing to note, the Department of Public Health and Human Services updated its statewide reporting system. And because of that upgrade, local officials were not able to report new cases into the system until late Sunday. So today's case count is lower than expected and state officials say tomorrow's will likely be higher. And new tonight at 6, Helena School District leaders say despite rising COVID-19 numbers in Lewis and Clark County, they are not planning to return to fully online learning. But MTN's Jonathan Ambarian reports those numbers are making it a challenge to keep all schools open. Every day, Helena Public Schools Human Resources is responsible for making sure every school is fully staffed. It's a job that's become much more difficult during the COVID-19 pandemic. With the virus transmitting through many of our families, you know, and through our um, community as a whole, we see way more absences for longer periods of time. District leaders say around 10% of their employees currently aren't able to work in person. In many cases, that's not because they've tested positive, but because they're in quarantine as a close contact or taking care of someone in quarantine. Leaders say the pool of substitute teachers hasn't been enough to fill every opening. Our staff has been fabulous in coming up with some creative ideas. We have paraprofessionals who are serving as on-site proctors while our teachers are porting in from their home. We also have people moving from classroom to classroom to try to facilitate supervision. Superintendent Tyler Ream says if they continue to see these types of staff shortages, they may have to consider intermittent closures, temporarily sending some schools back to all online learning. It's one of those things that as we continue to see numbers go up across our community, it's definitely something that is on the radar of possibility because at some point we simply can't make a go of it. We don't have enough people physically available to meet the needs of the students. COVID numbers are now high enough that the district has looked at going back fully online. However, Reem says public health leaders still don't believe there's been much virus transmission within the schools and that measures like masking and distancing have limited close contacts. So why should we close an aspect of our community that isn't a source? They don't know that that's actually going to be helpful in any regard. The school district is always looking for more people to serve as substitutes. If you're interested in being considered, you can find more information on our website. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Also today, the Montana City School District informed parents that it would be transferring all students to remote learning through November 27th. In a statement posted on their website, district leaders said they made the decision based on, quote, the complexity of recent cases, the shortage of human resources, and the advisement of the Jefferson County Health Department. Students are set to return to in-person classes on Monday, November 30th. All right, and let's take a closer look at those rising COVID-19 numbers in Lewis and Clark County. County health officials say they are seeing among the highest COVID-19 infection rates in the country right now. The county is seeing about 39 new cases a week per 10,000 people. The national average is three cases per 10,000. Although the department has added staff, officials say they are still struggling to keep up with the caseload, contact tracing, and data entry. While we have staffed up, and I know that the state has staffed up to do this as well, um, it's simply a matter of too many cases, uh, too many contacts, uh, too much disease locally, the infection rates are off the charts. Merchant says public health is not looking to add any more restrictions, but they do want to see enforcement of COVID-19 mandates for businesses that are willfully ignoring them. 
Now with a look at our cold forecast out there, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenant. It is pretty chilly in the wake of that uh, snowstorm that came through. Uh, maybe not upwards of two and two and a half feet, but uh snowstorm for a lot of the states. You can see some of those numbers there in the Lewistown area uh, between 12 and 19 inches. Kind of tough to measure uh, the amount of snow after the wind that uh, blew and drifted uh, the snow around here. Uh, right as the sun was going down, here's a look at Highway 200, Bowman's Corner. Some snow drifting over the roads here and this is in East Glacier and this is looking off towards the east in the uh, direction of Browning. Yeah, there's a car coming this way, but notice the lights kind of fuzzy. That's a sign of uh, some really bad drifting of the snow right there on the high line. So uh, yeah, the snow has stopped falling, but that fallen snow is a problem because we've got wind, more wind woes, not only through this week, but also this weekend looking really windy. A little smaller snow event we'll talk about and once again, on the weekend, we've got a storm to talk about. All the more coming up, plus weatherwise, in just a little bit. Curtis, now let's take a look at some of the hunting numbers after the third weekend of general rifle season. Now, while the overall number of hunters, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, say in Region 4, is below the 10 year average, the number of elk and deer harvested is actually above average. According to FWP officials, the whitetail harvest is 52% above the 10 year average and the elk harvest is 5% above average, but the mule deer harvest is below average by 46%. FWP biologists say antlered buck harvest is the primary factor driving the low mule deer harvest so far this season. And FWP is seeking information on a cow moose that was shot and left on Sure Enough Road in the little snowy mountains south of Lewistown. The animal was killed either October 31st or November 1st. FWP is asking anyone with information on the incident to please call 1-800-TIPMOT. Calls are kept confidential and a reward is possible. And stay where you are because still ahead on the news at 6, how this annual charity is now going online to help keep kids warm this winter. Montana's news leader. You're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back, everybody. The Exchange Club of Helena is hosting their annual Coats for Kids drive virtually this year. The club had to cancel their 2020 Festival of Wines due to the pandemic, which was a major fundraiser for the drive. But they still wanted to host this coat drive because they understand there is a greater need for coats due to the pandemic. The club will be donating coats and boots to K through fifth grade students. And the president of the club says the need for coats and boots increases every year. It's something that's going to continue to be needed, unfortunately, in our Helena area, is that kids are going to need help with coats and boots to stay warm in the winter. And that's something that the Helena Exchange Club is still going to be here to provide 5, 10, and 15 years from now. The club has already donated over 50 coats and boots to kids this year. A link to the donation page will be up on our website, ktvh.com. And speaking of coats, law enforcement officials want people to remember to keep dogs' coats in mind as the temperature drops. The Gallatin County Sheriff's Office said they start getting a lot of calls about heavy-coated dogs left out in the cold about this time of year. But for those dogs, the cold is okay. The Sheriff's Office put out several social media posts telling residents that heavy-coated dogs are bred to be outside in cold weather, and this typically does not require deputies to respond. So uh, what we try to do is just make sure that people know, you know, if, you, if the dog looks like it's shivering and it's cold, then that's, that's the basic. But if, it, if it's just out in the cold, there's, there's really no need to call us. Uh, but again, if you're concerned, you give us a call and we'll come out and take a look. And like the sheriff said, if you're unsure, it is better to be safe than sorry, but it is helpful to keep the type of dog and their coat in mind. That said, sub-zero temperatures are a cause for concern. And with more on our weather, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. Yeah, dogs can get frostbite too, mm -hmm. just like you and I. Hey, we've got a little more in the way of some snow header away. No, not feet, just a few inches. We'll take a look at that plus weather-wise coming up next. Weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. Welcome back. Much of Montana was blasted by a true blizzard over the weekend. And in this week's Weather Wise, there are certain criteria that uh, needs to be met for an official blizzard warning. And that is a warning you want to heed. 
Snow, wind, cold, no visibility, and white knuckle driving. A strong early season blizzard blitzed the state over the weekend. Some locations managed to escape the worst, but if anyone absolutely had to travel across northern or central Montana, they were met by some of Mother Nature's worst. In some locations, like the Judith Gap area, the conditions forced roads to be closed. A blizzard is a combination of three weather events, sustained wind or frequent wind gusts of 35 miles per hour or greater, visibility of less than a quarter of a mile due to large amounts of falling or blowing snow, and these conditions must be met for at least three consecutive hours. A blizzard does not require heavy snowfall or cold temperatures, even though this blizzard had both. Travel in a blizzard is not recommended due to the lack of visibility and drifting of snow. In the event you get stuck, first responders may have a difficult time locating you. If you become stranded, for 10 minutes every hour, turn on the car's engine and heater to keep warm. The exhaust pipe should be cleared from snow to protect from carbon monoxide backing into the cabin. Because the foundation of a blizzard is wind, frostbite is also a major concern to people and animals alike. Blizzards are deadly and unforgiving. This was not the first blizzard to ever hit Montana, and it certainly will not be the last. And now, you're a little more weatherwise. Also important to have that uh, winter survival gear in the car. Load up on those blankets, stick them in the trunk or in the back somewhere. Uh, Great Falls hit by true blizzard conditions for most of Saturday night and Sunday. It was really pretty nasty out there. 21 degrees, the current temperature wind chill of five right now and in Helena 19 degrees and it's nice that uh, we have calm conditions and temperatures gonna get a little chilly out there tonight look at the uh, numbers dropping very quickly if you watched at five o'clock uh, Butte and Bozeman were both at 16 we're down to nine right now Dylan was 12 at five o'clock it's down to four we kind of will have some calm conditions allowing for cooler temperatures uh, here in the southwestern part of the state, the valley locations. And uh, there will be a lot of wind that will keep the air temperature up, the ambient air temperature up across north central Montana. But of course, we've got wind, wind chills, and blowing snow an issue. The storm moving out through the Dakotas. Here's the next system. This one taking a different track. More of it will be off towards the north here. So uh, that will leave Montana with just a little light snow. And looking around the country, uh, the storm system that we saw kind of split into two, and part of it is producing a little snow down into the four corner states here. Uh, here is a look at what will happen tonight. A little snow increasing with that next system up there around the Whitefish Range, uh, over to Glacier, up into Lincoln County, picking up some of that snow. The Bitterroot seeing some snow with the track of low pressure off towards the north. This kind of favors the mountains west of the divide, although uh, the little belts, the big belts, will see a few snow showers. The mountains around Helen, a couple of snow showers tomorrow, but we've got a better chance at seeing some snow through north central Montana on Tuesday night into Wednesday. There's another front coming down from Canada. You can see that right there arriving around Cup Bank by midnight, and that will kind of reinforce some of this light snow emphasis on light here around Helena and Great Falls through Wednesday morning. We may get an inch or two at best with this little system coming through. So for tonight into tomorrow morning, mainly the mountains west of the divide, the little belts, the big belts will pick up a couple inches of snow. But Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, just a little light snow, a possible accumulation here east of the Continental Divide. And right down the divide, another two, maybe three inches. Those little dots of pink right there indicate where there could be six inches of snow and the higher terrain up on the divide. Tonight, blowing snow an issue around Browning and East Glacier and Cup Bank, even uh, Conrad and Shelby picking up some of that blowing snow. Wind not too bad out here in eastern Montana. Cold temperatures though, single digits. Uh, some blowing snow in areas of central Montana and maybe some blowing snow up on the mountain passes like McDonald Pass here uh, tonight into tomorrow. Speaking of Tuesday, tomorrow, a little warmer. A lot of the state will get up into the 30s above the freezing point 
point here. Uh, some snow showers again, mainly in the mountains of western areas in the state, but we may get a few coming down into the lower elevations east of the divide. Wednesday, a little light snow, especially in the morning hours around Helena and uh, Great Falls. We could have, again, up to an inch, basically just a little light coating of snow. The mountains picking up a couple inches of snow. Thursday looks like a pretty nice day, mostly sunny skies, bit on the brisk side, and there will be wind across the Montana prairies. And then heading into Friday, here comes another storm that will affect the state here over the weekend, mainly with wind. Friday, mostly cloudy skies in the western part of the state. Some snow mixed with some rain around Missoula and Kalispell, but uh, very windy conditions across the prairies, and that wind will howl for pretty much everybody in the state here, both Saturday and Sunday. So uh, for Helena, We've got 39 tomorrow, a couple of snow showers. Wednesday, Veterans Day, some light snow in the morning hours. And then the wind really picks up again Friday night into Saturday. It will come in with some warmer, milder Pacific air. And for Great Falls, a few snow showers around tomorrow. Better chance for a little light snow Wednesday morning. And get ready for a very windy weekend. Thanks. From Montana's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for spending some time with us here tonight. As I'm sure you've noticed, Old Man Winter has made his return back to Montana. And as the Montana Ag Network's Russell Nemitz shares, in addition to the obvious challenges that the cold temperatures and snow bring, ranchers also need to pay close attention to their livestock's nutritional needs. Well, the mild fall weather that we've been enjoying has now been replaced with cold temperatures and snow for much of our region. And MSU Extension Beef Cattle Specialist Megan Van Emmen reminds ranchers to make sure they're meeting their livestock's nutritional needs during weather events like this. The big one we want to keep in mind is that rule of thumb that for every degree below 32 degrees, we increase our requirements by 1%. And, you know, the rule of thumb is energy requirements, but the big thing I want to want to keep in mind for that is that's all requirements. You know, everything goes up when the weather turns to, to lovely winter like it has today. But with this change in weather, we, you know, it's the mother cows and then those freshly weaned calves we really want to keep an eye on because um, they're coming off that high stress event of weaning. She says quality of hay is also a big factor in keeping cattle healthy especially those mother cows. Right now we're still in mid gestation. That fetus really isn't putting a lot of extra demand on that cow yet. Um, we're kind of getting into that time frame, so we can still feed a little bit of that lesser quality hay, but I would definitely supplement it with, you know, a, a hay in that 10 to 11% protein, um, or, you know, never underestimate, you know, range cubes, flick tubs, however you can help them get those protein requirements met. That's our big, uh, concern this time of year and in the winter are those protein requirements because our pastures are probably in that four to five percent protein range. Fresh and clean water is also important, she says, in helping cattle with their feed intake, but also keeping them warm during these cold and snowy conditions. Yeah, fresh, clean water is extremely important. It keeps intake of feed up, and that's what they need to do to make sure they stay warm as our temperature drops. They, that rumen is its heat source, so um, make sure they, they're consuming those fresh quality water sources and really make sure they're in to maintain through some of these harder uh, weather conditions. In Billings, Russell Nimitz, MTN News. We will finish things up here when we come back. As news leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back, everybody. I don't know if you heard, but three toys were just introduced into the Toy Hall of Fame. And the 2020 winners are Baby Nancy. She was the first black doll to have an afro and dark skin. The groundbreaking doll was launched uh, nationwide in 1968. The toy is credited with making cultural and commercial breakthroughs here in the U.S. Sidewalk Chalk was also inducted. And last but certainly not least, Jenga made it into the hall. According to the manufacturer, the wooden block game was created in uh, Ghana in the 1970s. And here's a little fun fact for you. It's certainly fun for us. The record for the highest known Jenga tower is 40 complete stories. The Strong National Museum of Play announced the 12 toy finalists back in September. Final selections were made on the advice from historians and educators.
Good old washable chalk. I've been voting for it for many years now. Finally got in. Uh, here's a look at Great Falls seven day forecast. A couple of snow showers around mainly in the mountains uh, east and west of town here. Uh, for Wednesday, a better chance of a little light snow in the morning hours. And uh, this weekend, really Friday, Saturday, Sunday, get ready for a lot of wind. Uh, throughout the entire state and in Helen, a couple of mountain snow showers tomorrow. Better chance for light snow on Wednesday. I bet that's it for the news at six. We'll see you back here at 10. Have a great night.